The Men in Black, quote, The truth may be puzzling. It may take some work to grapple with. It may be counterintuitive. It may contradict deeply held prejudices. It may not be con consonant with what we desperately want to be true. But our preferences do not determine what is true. End quote. Carl Sagan. Mention the term men in black, and most people will probably roll their eyes or refer to the 1997 motion picture sci-fi hit starring Tommy Lee Jones and Will Smith. But what many people may not realize is that the origin of the movie is based on hundreds of real-life encounters with the proverbial MIB. Paranormal witness encounters with intimidating agent-like men in black suits who are thought to belong to a secret organization with a secret agenda have been occurring for decades. There have been many anomalous and supernatural reports throughout the years of a group of men wearing trench coats and fedora hats, wraparound glasses and stern expressions with the sole purpose of harassing UFO or paranormal witnesses. They appear the way they do, not for effect, but as camouflage. Most men in black encounters are by night. The MIB are eerily elusive with very few confirmed photos or any evidence of their visitations. The legend of the men in black first emerged in the late 1940s, around the time of the first UFO crash recoveries, but they became more ubiquitous in the 1950s when covert organizations began to control all operations surrounding paranormal activities. Knowledge about the MIB started gaining popularity in the 1950s with books such as Gray Barker's They Knew Too Much About Flying Saucers. Their presence is still in the mainstream today with the Men in Black franchise of movies, which are originally based on a comic book theme inspired by the phenomenon. At the height of the MIB sightings in the 1950s, J. Edgar Hoover ordered a copy of Barker's book and was using the FBI to actively investigate the mystery. Who are these guys? Initially, the first reports of Men in Black involved witnesses of UFOs or extraterrestrial encounters. One of the first reports of MIB was in 1947 when Harold Dahl reported that he saw six UFOs when he and several friends were boating. After the encounter, Dahl said an intimidating muscular man wearing a nondescript black suit took him out to breakfast and threatened him and his family if he ever spoke of the encounter. Dahl later recanted this meeting, but it may be that he was intimidated again and decided to simply deny that he saw anything rather than have his family meet the men in black. Since the first reports of MIB, many have tried to discover the true identity and agenda of these dark agents with little success. And for those who do know their true identity, either by association or as a subject of one of their operations, it has been strongly suggested that the means they utilize to maintain total suppression of all paranormal information is disturbingly successful. According to the accounts of people contacted by them, the men in black always seem to have detailed information 
on the persons they contact, as if the individual has been under surveillance for a long period of time. This can be shocking to the witnesses who maintain they have never done anything wrong and have no police record. The MIBs have been described as seemingly confused by the nature of everyday items, such as pens, eating utensils, or food, as well as using outdated slang, although accounts of their behavior vary widely. They often claim to be from an agency collecting information on the unexplained phenomenon their subject has encountered. The MIBs are associated with almost all paranormal and anomalous phenomena, not just UFOs. They have spoken to witnesses of poltergeists, space-time disturbances, telepathy, and psychokinesis, along with sightings of Bigfoot and the Loch Ness Monster, just to name a few. They are suspected to be the shadow organization and the workhorse team behind countless above-top-secret projects around the world. In all cases, agents in black appear to collect information and silence those specific witnesses who claim to have experienced weird or unusual phenomena. <coughs> MIB are humans in the black ops. The U.S. top secret projects associated with MIB include Majestic 12, Stargate Technology, and Area 51. To this day, they continue to infiltrate the governments around the world, seeking out, analyzing, and concealing at all costs extraordinary phenomenon of every type for their own ultra-top-secret agenda. Sometimes the men in black have claimed to come from the U.S. Air Force or the CIA. Those who have encountered them say they produce identification, but when verification is later sought, the people describe either do not exist, have been dead for some time, or do exist but have a different rank. <coughs> Shortly after the 1947 Roswell crash, several strangers came to the airbase dressed in plain clothes and flashed ID cards for an unknown project, perhaps part of the special CIC team, then called the Army Counterintelligence Corp. Many reports confirm a special CIC team was placed in charge of the Roswell recovery operation. Also in attendance at the base were Secret Service agents represented, representing President Truman. The presence of MIB may have heightened Eisenhower's concern over losing control of the UFO technology situation. He felt betrayed by the end of his term when he saw enormous power falling into the hands of private corporations who were given access to the recovered materials. This would explain his damning condemnation of the military-industrial complex power grab in his final speech before leaving office. Another possible explanation of ongoing MIB activities is that the newest MIBs are trained cyborg assassins, a cybernetic organism being with both biological and artificial parts, gleaned from test tube babies developed in the early 1970s. In a March 2011 interview, Michael Prince revealed that between 1976 and 1979, he was one of a group of 42 children who were subjected to trauma-based mind control and implanted as future cyborg super soldiers. He claims he was trained at a secret Nazi SS and MI6 UK intelligence networks 
Trauma Mind Control Training Facility at Fort Nelson, British Columbia, Canada. The super secret base was officially called the Nazi SS Q552 base, not far from the tourist town of Nelson. The 42 children, including himself, were all test tube babies, each bearing sought after human extraterrestrial DNA. They were adopted into human families that were part of multi-generational trauma-based mind control families. The children were being trained to be future assassins and continue to operate in that capacity today. This information collaborates with abundant independent evidence of a threatened takeover of human society by the controlling elite, who are in turn following the agenda of a hostile reptilian faction leading the efforts. Office of Scientific Investigation and Research. The men in black acting as secret governmental agents are commonly identified as working clandestinely with the black arts. They were created under the alias of a nondescript organization called the Office of Scientific Investigation and Research, or OSIR. Created in the early 1940s as a byproduct of a top secret governmental program, the OSIR is an ultra top secret organization whose far reaching operations can be found in every corner of the world. Their secret officers are dispatched to throw people off the black ops trail, spread disinformation, or intimidate paranormal witnesses to keep quiet. The OSIR, among other things, is known to conduct scientific research and investigations surrounding anomalous phenomenon. This is also known as paranormal, parapsychological, supernatural, and metaphysical phenomena. The organization is said to have significant power, utilizing their far-reaching authority to suppress and maintain their operations and very existence. They operate independently of all governments and private organizations, and while their true agenda is unknown, it is believed that they study of anomalous phenomenon and its potential applications might be their primary focus. <coughs> Excuse me. With significant funding and resources, as well as rumored advanced technology and influence with various powerful officials, the OSIR infiltrates many aspects of society and government scanning for phenomena and conducting their scientific operations. Aspects of science, law, medicine, religion, government, and business applications in the corporate world are permeated with their operatives. For anyone who might be involved in any of their clandestine operations, be it a person who experiences a phenomenon or an individual recruited to partially assist their operations, the OSIR utilizes disturbingly unorthodox, all-encompassing means of intimidation, coupled with techniques to suppress or cover up any and all information. It is the peculiar modus operandi of the OSIR that suggests they are indeed the notorious MIBs. In order to conduct their clandestine operations, the organization takes on various aliases and cover identities, choosing to hide in plain sight. The OSIR came into the public eye in 1990 when the organization opened a public affairs department. For a decade, by means of this department, 
the OSIR interacted with the general public and the media, openly stating that their primary focus is, quote, anomalous phenomena, end quote. In 2000, the OSIR closed its public affairs department and terminated all contacts with the outside world. Nothing important has been heard from them since. Non-human or interdimensional MIB. Some MIB reports describe them as being eerily inhuman, taking on characteristics of an unearthly nature. Some theorists propose that many of these reports of MIB were allowed to be disseminated in order to create an air of unbelievability among those who reported them, who will more readily dismiss their own paranormal encounter. The only constant is their apparent objective to track down true paranormal encounters and control the situation to suit their own agenda. However, if they are of strictly human origin, this does not explain many of the high strange aspects of the MIB encounters. Also referred to as Horlocks, several theories claim they are apparently humans but act strangely because they are controlled by draconian influences. An extension of this theory suggests the MIB are the hybrid human and gray mix being developed on Earth for decades, and paranormal witness intimidation is one of their program tasks. The most bizarre of encounters reveal the MIB as non-emotional and non-expressive, with no visible response, almost as if they know nothing of human culture. Logic, surprise, or human emotions do not seem to apply to these biosynthetic MIB forms. Most MIB do not seem to act or talk like government agents or policemen either. Their behavior seems more reptilian or synthetic than human. Most humanoid MIB have probably been implanted by the draconians and are essentially their telepathic slaves. Over the decades, MIB have taken on somewhat different forms. Some are reported as exceptionally tall, while others are much shorter than average, but their similarities are undeniable. Stiff black suits, sunglasses, and traveling in big black Cadillacs are all associated with their appearances. The MIB are often, though not always, associated with large black automobiles, some of which have been seen disappearing into mountainsides. Although appearing new, the old model black cars seem weirdly out of date, especially in the more modern MIB encounters. On rare occasions, the MIB have been reported walking through walls to confront paranormal witnesses. They have been seen driving off into canyons or tunnels, or in some cases, appearing or disappearing into thin air. The MIB, as the malevolent ET theory suggests, come from external societies existing underground. They are said to reside in ancient antediluvian or Atlantean underground complexes which have been reestablished beneath the eastern U.S. seaboard on the west coast and elsewhere. In the case of one subterranean base located between Hopland and Lakeport, California, their cars are last seen driving into the side of a mountain and disappearing. Another suspected MIB base location is near the Dugway Airfield in Utah, called the New Area 51, where backward-engineered crafts are being actively tested. Their black cars seem to be cloaked or treated with an advanced electromagnetic te technique, 
a capability discussed recently by physicists. Or they have interdimensional aspects because they can be gone in an instant, seemingly having the ability to materialize and dematerialize at will. While something similar to this invisibility phenomenon has been demonstrated in our modern laboratories, interdimensional phenomenon is barely at the theoretical stage. The possibility of multiple dimensions is suggested by mathematicians and vigorously discussed by theoretical physicists, but its implications are scarcely touched upon. Shape-shifting. The term shape-shifting refers to a change in the shape or form, visible to the naked eye, of a person or an alien creature. It is also called transformation, transmorgrification, homeomorphism, or metamorphosis. Although MIB possess human shape, form, and basic anatomy, strictly speaking, they are not human beings. While they can morph to look like us, the only thing that cannot change are their pupils, which they hide behind contact lenses or heavy sunglasses, and they always have vertical slits instead of circles. Their actual normal or real appearance is that of a hideous-looking creature that would most certainly alarm or terrify any Earth human. These entities are known to have infiltrated our military-industrial complex with a particular interest in our planetary missile defense network called Star Wars. Many scientific researchers in the USA and the UK working on the Strategic Defense Initiative, that's SDI, have died of mysterious causes. At least one shapeshifter was discovered working inside the SDI program. Apparently the entity had been stealing documents and transmitting their contents to some point beyond the planet. Rumor has it that the entity was physically examined and it was discovered that its internal organs were not human. Another way the shapeshifters can be detected is by the strangeness of their auras. Some UFO witnesses report being terrorized by apparent quasi-human infiltrators who look like the men in black, although many of the MIB who have been reported were obviously humans working for some obscure operation, such as subterranean intelligence or an off-world planetary agency. Other entities could be either cyborgs or clones or even paraphysical manifestations. There was a branch of the so-called MIB that exhibited definite reptilian characteristics. Among their own kind, they used thought only, but they have learned to speak English and other languages fluently. In essence, these are reptilian humanoids with a full-blown, although at times not too convincing, reconstructive surgery job apparently intended to allow them to operate in human society undetected. Some of the early infiltrators betrayed themselves with their plastic or artificial appearance, whereas in more recent years, the disguise has become far more sophisticated. With the advent of molecular shape-shifting occult technology, techno-hypnotic transmitters and portable laser hologram technology, artificially created entities are much more difficult to detect. Besides changing their own physical attributes, shape-shifting entities are also reported to attach to humans by two of the lower chakras. The entity itself stays hidden 
in the lower fourth dimension while the human is manipulated to do the entity's bidding. The reptoids overshadow a human while, it, while not actually occupying the body. The shape-shifting ability is not a natural phenomenon in the same sense that the creature we know as a chameleon can change its skin color. Those creatures capable of shape-shifting do not exist as a separate race. However, they engage in rituals and utilize certain technologies that enable them to alter their particular physical appearances. It has to do with the fact that the body, as is true of all physical things, is not really solid. It looks and feels as if it is, but in actuality, all matter is composed of atomic and subatomic particles of light interacting as molecules and compounds chemically joined together. There are certain rituals which, when undertaken, allow for a range of manipulations of the so-called solid bodily mass to arrange itself into different appearances. The UFO Connection Throughout their history, MIB have been primarily associated with UFOs and extraterrestrial phenomenon because of the simple fact that these phenomena are primarily aerial events in the atmosphere and widely viewed by many witnesses. Therefore, when reports of MIB follow reports of UFOs or extraterrestrial encounters, they are given more credence and attract a wider audience. The MIB have been encountered most often after UFO sightings, usually intimidating witnesses into keeping silent about what they've seen. Some of the witnesses may be abductees with suppressed memories of the event. Some UFO witnesses did not report their sightings, had not yet spoken to anyone, but had an impossibly fast visit from the MIBs, sometimes within hours. It is as if the MIB have precognition of the best and most efficient location to confront a fresh witness. One theory is that they are space travelers coming back at the right time and fitting into society with their strange mode of dress and outdated cars. Maybe some UFOs are time machine crafts rather than interstellar craft and the MIBs are tasked with making these objects seemingly invisible. Apparently instilling fear is the goal of the MIB. A form of psychic intimidation, but not necessarily direct physical threats. They have an air of intimidation described as the feeling one gets before a dog barks and then bites. There are lots of psychological dramas playing out during the high strange MIB witness encounters. Their threats appear to be motivated by telepathic attempts to utilize terror and fear as a psychological weapon against witnesses. But make no mistake, say researchers, MIBs have been monitoring, analyzing, and researching every type of anomalous and paranormal phenomenon imaginable for decades. It is very likely the MIB are associated with the rogue J. Rod Grays, who are against disclosure of the situation in any manner that could promote our present-day human species enlightenment, since this enlightenment would provide human conscious souls the freedom from their devious plan of mass manipulation. Thus, they must continue to control the greater human consciousness to be expedient resource for their own service to self, means and ends. Doctrine 
of the convergent timeline paradox. According to the doctrine of the convergent timelines, as proposed by Area 51 microbiologist Dan Burish, the rogue J-Rods are really future humans who have deployed a population of human gray clones in this current era. These entities are early products of prior accomplished future human, past human, genetic hybridization work. These programmable life forms, or PLF, are the most likely candidates of the MIB identity, whose core mission is to enforce their own timeline operations. This casualty control and containment operational force of MIB, instigated by the Tall Greys, is intended to accomplish the ends of preventing the population from becoming aware of their devious genetic and abduction activity. They have a vested interest in preventing the kind of scientific progress which would develop technologies that could be used against them. Their present era manipulating presence is also to prevent any mass human enlightenment breakthroughs that could impair their capacity to manipulate present-day humans toward a future of servitude to their own future evolutionary ends. From the rogue ET view, any widespread conscious acknowledgement and awareness of their manipulating presence would produce unpredictable responses among the genetic resource stock and thereby hinder their regressive usage agenda. If benevolent ETs contribute to adverting an earth catastrophe, this will help balance the karmic effect they have made of the present era as an evolutionary pit stop for their journey into a new future from this looping back point. During the next decade, present era humans will experience an optimum evolutionary boost from the natural stargate activation and the massive wave of cosmic energy called Wave X, which started to arrive on Earth at the end of September 2015. This will feed forward to produce new evolutionary and future spiritual factors that will again feed back to support our new course into an even deeper positive participant quantum energetic karmic loop. If successful, there is no turning back. The men in black and all malevolent forces will find it nearly impossible to exist on the newly awakened planet Earth.